Ebony K. Williams is pregnant. She's having a baby via IVF. I'm kind of surprised at uh, the number of angry YouTubers because she said this a few years ago. She said she uh, had, uh, what's the correct term for uh, freezing her eggs, that she froze her eggs and she's been going through IV of treatments, even with the whole bus drivers situation. At that time, she was doing the IVF and um, and trying to have a baby. So I don't know. Maybe people uh, didn't pay attention to, to what she said. That's what we're going to talk about. Happy Monday, my beautiful cousins. Welcome and shout out to all of our new cousins. Thank you for your love. And support. I miss you guys yesterday, but girl, I was just tired. I could get up. I got up to go eat, but I just couldn't get up <laughs> to do a video and, and for church, of course. So thank you for your love and your support. Happy Monday to you. Be sure to subscribe, thumbs up, share this out. Leave a comment below for me and let me know what you think. I want to thank you for those of you who have picked up my number one best selling book, 23 Types of Guys You Might Meet which is available on Amazon. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Okay, so let's go into this article by page six. Uh, okay, so first of all, a lot of Dusty Spookies, Ray Ray's Tyrone's uh, has been upset with Ebony K anyways because she said when Ayanla, the mammy, was on the show, she, you know, asked her would she date a bus driver and she said if he owns the bus she said if she owned the bus driver company i'm all with ebony okay uh uh yeah i'm not dating marrying a bus driver but that's that's james okay if that's what you want to do i think it's fine if that is what you want to do there is no problem with what you want to do another thing i want to touch on is this people pushing on you what they think you should have that happened to me while i was in school my supervisor at the time, who shall re remain nameless, uh, was pushing me to go down to the jailhouse and stand in line, Green Mile, and get a man coming out of jail. The nerve of that mammy. She was a mammy, too. <laughs> okay. She was a mammy. You know how I feel about babies. The best place for babies uh, and children is in a home where the parents, husband, and wife is married. It is a happy home. It is a financially stable home. It is a comfortable home. It is a loving home. That is God's intention. God wants us to have babies in the covenant of marriage. And God wants us to have homes where his presence reign and rule. God is against us having babies out of wedlock. Y'all know I had a baby at 16. It is not God's will for us to have baby out of the covenant of marriage. And so now we're living in this time where, especially for a black woman, there are not enough good black men to go around for us to marry, for black women to find suitable mates, okay? And that go back to the part about pushing who you think I should have on me. You know, like Ayanla and, and all the other people pushing a bus driver on Ebony because you think that's what she should have, okay? I have a problem with that. Now, I think we are in a time when we really need to have this serious conversation about women and babies. First of all, ladies, if you are in your 30s, your early 30s, and you want to have children and you have not met a suitable husband, I think if you can afford it, you should freeze your eggs, okay? My husband and I were going through the process of IVF. I was 42 and I had so many eggs. I still had so many eggs. Like, they could not believe I was 42 with so many eggs. That's not every woman. So if you are a woman who wants to get married, and if you're like 35, haven't had a, haven't gotten pregnant, haven't met the suitable mate, I think you should freak, go ahead and freeze your eggs if you can afford it. It is very expensive. Now, 
As for Ebony K, let me give you my testimony. Y'all know I got married at 35. That is old to be getting married. And when I was 30 and I, you know, I ran from Mr. Kryptonite, you know, Mr. Kryptonite and 23,000 guys, you might meet. I thought to myself, I said, Lord, I want to be married. I've always wanted to be married. And I want to have more children. I wanted to have at least two more children. I was about 30 at this time. And I thought to myself, if I got to 40, now I'm 46 years old today. So that was 16 years ago, 30, 40, 16. If I get to age 40 and I'm still not married, I'm going to have me a baby because I wanted to have more children. Now, 16 years ago, I didn't think about IVF. I don't even know if I thought about it, but I don't think I did because I thought to myself, I thought to myself <clears throat> that if I got 40, still not married, to be able to have my baby, I was going to go ahead and get pregnant. I had my guy picked out Mr. Kryptonite because, you know, he wanted it, girl. He just didn't get it, but he wanted it. So I knew all I had to do was give it, okay, at four. And in a still, quiet, little voice, Holy Spirit said in a whisper, your testimony. In a whisper. And I say, I'm going to get 40. I'm going to hook up Mr. Kryptonite. We're going to have a, a baby or two. Holy Spirit says, in a still, quiet whisper, your testimony. And I'm, I'm not sure how I felt about that. I'm not sure. Did I take the idea out of my mind at that time? Because I was on an emotional high, where I thought to myself, if I got to 40, didn't have a baby, I haven't got married, didn't have a baby, I was going to hook up with Mr. Kryptonite and we was going to do the do and I was going to have a baby or two. Ooh, do the do, have a baby too. And what Holy Spirit wanted me to remember is you have a testimony and you're going to mess up your testimony by coming out of God's will to go have a baby with some man because you ain't, you didn't get married or have a baby. So have a baby. So now you go come out of God's will for your life, mess up your testimony so you can have a baby at 40. That's what Holy Spirit was saying to me. And when I came down off my emotional high, I thought to myself, if I got to 40, did not, haven't gotten married, haven't had a baby, I would go ahead and adopt. Thank God. Praise Jesus. I got married when I was 35, met my wonderful husband at 34, married at 35, and had this beautiful little baby boy at 37. And God still only gave me one baby. Just one. And so my husband and I was going through IVF. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. COVID, um, doctor move, being traumatized, everything that could go wrong. And my husband said to me, that's it. We're not, we're, this is it. We're not going to do it. And, and I still didn't receive it. I called my dad. I had to talk to him. And he was like, Janice, just maybe this is it. God's will is for you just to have one baby. And, and so it took me eight years to finally start giving my Lou Michael stuff away because it was emotional for me. I still have all his clothes upstairs. I haven't given away not one piece of Little Michael's clothes. I've given away toys, but his clothes, I still have them. I told him we're going to have to start donating this stuff to the church because it was emotional for me because I wanted to have another baby, even though I had two beautiful children. <laughs> I wanted to have another baby. So ladies, when I say I understand wanting to be married and wanting to have a baby, take it from me that I understand. See, Cousin Sister Janice is not like these other YouTubers out here 
Cousin Sister Jane is really understand. I understand what it means to want to be married and you ain't married. Want to have a baby and oh God only gave you one more baby. Wanting to have somebody to protect you and provide for you and love you and adore you and you're still single at 35. I understand. So when I say I understand Ebony K. Williams and I understand other women who are going down this route, trust me when I say I understand. But I also understand that there are millions of little black children out there that needs a home. People have even asked me after little Mike, don't you want to adopt? And I'm like, no, I don't. Because I still have that emotional trauma of not being able to have another baby. So when I say I understand wanting to have your own baby, wanting to carry your own baby in your belly, want to have the baby kick, want the milk to come in your breast so you can nurse your own baby. Trust me when I say I understand. I understand women going through, going this route of doing IVF to have a baby. But is this God's will for us and our children? No, it's not. It is not God's will for, for there to be single mother homes. Granted, life happens, death happens, divorce happens, but God's best and his will is for us to have a mother, a father who are married in a home, having children, raising children to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I don't know Ebony K. Williams' religious persuasion. Now, somebody might say, well, Janice isn't going to adopt a baby the same as having a baby with in a single home. I mean, you could you could look at it that way, but you're not, I don't want to say play God, because I understand. I, I don't want to say that. I understand it. But I, I don't believe it is God's will for us to go do IVF, to have babies, to be single mothers. Now, surrogacy, all that stuff is in the Bible. Y'all do know that, right? Sarah, Abram, Hagar. The only difference back then, they actually put the D in the P and, you know, Abraham really slept with him. Hagar to have the baby. And then when she's having the baby, she would sit on, uh, Sarah, uh, Hagar would sit on Sarah's knees and push out the baby that way. And then the baby became Sarah. So surrogacy is not new. Read the Bible. Excuse me. They have just developed the signs of the man don't have to sleep with the woman. Just take out the sperm to do the egg. Okay. God's will is for children to be born in a home with a mom and dad in the covenant of marriage where it's happy and peaceful and financially, financially, financially stable, where there's love and caring and the presence of the Lord. But do I understand women going out there to do IVF to have babies? Yeah, I understand. <laughs> I, I I understand. I, I wouldn't have done it, but I definitely understand. But at 30, when I was on my emotional high, I thought to myself, I'm going to go get with Mr. Krypton and have us babies. I will have beautiful babies with him. Now, Ebony K. Williams was married when she was in her 20s, which is why I'm against getting married in your 20s, because you're not really prepared to play the role. Marriage is a role you're playing. The husband is to love his wife like Christ loved the church, provide for her and protect her. Her wife is to submit, respect, honor, and adore. 
So a lot of people getting married, don't know the roles they're supposed to play and can't play the roles. She didn't want to be married at 27. She was married. She didn't want to be, so she divorced him. Which is why I'm against getting married too, too young. <clears throat> I'm against it. Because you're not ready to be married. You're not ready to play your role. You're not ready to respect that man, honor him, adore him. So when you're not ready to play your role, all kind of stuff happens. And then she was engaged. Wasn't she engaged to that dude, that white guy who already had uh, three children and she broke up with him during COVID because she wanted him to leave his kids and come stay with her because the kids are grown. I think the kid was 25, 18. And I think there was a nine-year-old, something like that. And I'm like, see Ebony K that's because you're not a parent. And she was saying, but the kids are adults. Not when it's a worldwide catastrophe, they're not. Huh? See, when you're not a parent, you don't know what it's like to have your heart living on the outside of your heart. I don't care if my baby is 50. In a worldwide disaster, uh, whatever the word is, I want to be with my children because this might be it. So no Ebony K. Williams, I think I said that in my video when I did it on her, no Ebony K. Williams, he's not going to leave his kids, even though they're adults, to come stay with you. Because you don't know what it's like to be a parent. You don't know what it's like to think maybe this is it. <laughs> and if this is it, we all going to go out at the same time. I wanted all my kids to come be with me because we don't know what's going to happen. The world might be ended. We all might go, but I want to be with my babies, but no. She wanted to be with him and him not with his kids. No, ma'am. So she started the whole uh, process of IVF a few years ago. I'm just a little confused about people being upset because I'm like, she did say it. She said it years ago with the whole bus driver situation. Okay. She said it. So those are my thoughts. Let me go ahead and read the article. Um, she's having a little baby girl. She looks absolutely beautiful. <clears throat> and um, again, if you're 34, you're not married, you want to have kids, go ahead and freeze your eggs. The freezing of the egg is they can also, they're going to put it back in you because as you get older, you get less, you have less eggs. Okay. Ladies, if you don't understand what that means. Okay. Oh, these things. Okay. Here we go. Ebony K. William is pregnant. The Real Housewives of New York 1140 announced Wednesday that she's expecting her first child, a baby girl, after undergoing into in virtual fertilization. Anybody who's gone through IV or attempt IV will tell you so many things have to go right for the final results of this journey to be a baby. She told, yes, yes, it is. Mm hmm. Um, she looks pretty. She's pretty. Uh, Ebony K is a beautiful girl. Um, that's why I've called this my remarkable miracle. I think she's been going through it for a few years now. Uh, because it really does feel like I've been the recipient of some very enormous favor from God. William, whose due date is August 16th, shared that she nicknamed her daughter one of one because the luck she had during her fertility journey. I did, oh, my computer's acting up, y'all. I did one egg retrieval at 34. There you go, ladies. If you're 34, you're not married. 35, start getting them eggs out. 
not really having a clear intention on if I would use those eggs or when I could would use uh, the eggs, she recalled. And six years later, that one egg retrieval led to one genetically normal embryo, which led to one successful embryo transplant and one pregnancy later. I'll soon have God willing, one beautiful, healthy baby girl. So it does feel like fate. Oh, you could tell. She probably you could tell it in her face. Uh, the former uh, Bravo Brilliby admitted that becoming a mother wasn't something she always wanted to do. I want to say that with conviction and clarity, I was not the little girl that grew up fantasizing about having kids and what I would name them and all of that. She told the magazine that was more not my dream or fantasy. I had no real expectation around it. Williams admitted that she was not sure whether she would ever use the eggs she had frozen and did not have a surefire plan. It was the pandemic, right? The pandemic. That's what I was looking for. And having some real ex ex existential conversation within my own self about legacy and life and love and the different ways in which I really wanted to explore family. She explained, adding that she was able to free herself from the right reginess of what legacy, love, and family could look like. Those are the three pillars I reassess, and it helps shape me from this idea of I have to have it this way on this timeline everyone else is following, she said. Another thing I want to talk about uh, is with Black women. Because Black women goes to college and are told you're a strong, independent Black woman. You don't need no man until you get 40 and you want to have a baby and you want to get married. Until you get 40, you're tired of struggling on your own, doing it on your own, and you want to have a baby, and then you think, I do want a man. And so now Ebony K is telling young women, I did the video, I think, while you're in college, date while you're in college. Balance. Balance is the key. I think Proverbs say, unjust weight is an abomination to God. See, Black women, we don't have balance. We want to go get the degree. We want to go get the job because we don't need a man until we turn around. We're 40 and you realize you do need a man and all the good men, as some say, are gone. So balance is what's important. You know, I, I, I think everybody should have a life plan. Think it through. Think it out. If you want to get married, you got to start working on that early. Okay. So I love what she said. Those are the three pillars. It shaped my from this idea if I have to do it this way or on this timeline, everyone else is following. She said, the lawyer who was the first black cast of the House of Black Franchise also spoke about her decision to become a mother on her own. So who going to have the baby shower? I'm sure she got from her. She's pretty. There will always be that voice that says, maybe I should have waited to meet a man and remarry before I have a baby. Maybe I should not be trying to do this alone, she said, but F it. F that. I'm not waiting. I'm 40 years old. I'm not waiting to build assets. I'm not waiting to build my career. I'm not waiting to travel. And I'm certainly not waiting to start a family. William says she refused to wait one more day to have a child because of her single status. Right. So you're traveling, you're building assets, you're getting a home. Do all of those things while you're trying to meet somebody to get married. Everything I do, I'm doing right now, and I'm excited. She gushed. I feel as ready as I'm ever going to be. The TV host and her fiance, whom she has never publicly named, called off their engagement during the COVID pandemic after dating for nearly four years. Four years is a long time, Ebony. You don't waste it four years with this man. No, ma'am. Uh, she was also married to an unknown man at the age of 27, but divorced after 10 months. 10 months of divorce. You're not ready. Shouldn't have gotten married. So there you have it. Let me know um, what you think about, uh, about what I said in this video. Would you do go ahead and do IVF all by your own? I, I, um, 
No, I don't. For me, I, you know, I, I would go ahead and adopt a baby. But I, I understand wanting to have your own baby. I, I, I understand. There's nothing like you looking in the eyes of your children, seeing your husband or seeing your family or, you know, but I definitely, I definitely understand the desire and the need, but God's will is, come on some, hallelujah, God's will. God's will is what? Marriage, one man, one woman, building a family. The first command God gave to Adam and Eve is to do what? Multiply. Have babies. Create babies that look like you in God's vision, in God's eyes, and 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 create and multiply. I love you, my darlings. Let me know what you think below. Talk to you later. Bye.